and welcome back to another episode of Cooking with the Cripple. I'm your host, the Cripple, and today we're going to be making one of my childhood favorites for breakfast, French toast. Now what you want to do to start, before you even start making this, you want to take out a few loaves, or not loaves, well, depending on what kind of party you're having, yeah, loaves, but you want to take out your bread and let it stale up for a couple of hours, meaning hard and basically on the point of being rotten, but it's, it's good. It's very good, trust me, it's good. But into this mix, you want, you want an eggy sort of uh, base. That's the word I'm looking for. You want an egg base with milk. So I added in four eggs, because I'm cooking for myself and my two neighbors. So, depending on how big the... No! Oh, bollocks. Oh, well. Mistakes happen in the kitchen, it's okay. I just dropped the, um... The... Uh, the fork into the mixture. But, don't worry, it's fine. It's still good. But, um... Depending on the size of your party, that dictates how many eggs you're going to use and how much bread you're going to use. So, I'm using six pieces of bread and holy white, whatever you want to cook with, or what it, actually, I don't know if this is cooking, baking, frying, I don't know what this is technically labeled as, but, um, I used four eggs, two-thirds cup of milk and um let me look real quick ground nutmeg cinnamon and i th i believe paprika that's what gives it its dark complexion but anyways i think that's enough stirring and plus you want to stir it but you don't want it to settle but at the same time you don't want to stir it so much that it looks like that in the middle because you kind of let it patternize your french toast but when i was a kid i always like i know i never admitted this to anybody but i always thought french toast was kind of fancy to me and but i i loved it as a kid i still do i i just haven't gotten around to making it but anyways you're gonna i don't know i don't think i can fit two so we're just gonna go one at a time you're gonna let this soak and, oh, that's what the fork is for, duh. But you're gonna kinda of push it down and I know you guys can barely see this, but that's okay. You're gonna push it down and you're gonna let it soak for about 30 seconds on each side, flip it over, do the same so that the, the batter has time to soak into the bread. So I didn't count on this one, so we'll just, We'll just eyeball this one for a second and then flip it over. I know that was nowhere near 30 seconds, but that's okay. Ah! See, this is why you want to get it stale because otherwise it kind of falls apart and it's just no good. And oh, also, also, I, I was watching, I do a lot of research when I do cooking. So that's why it takes me a couple days to figure out what recipe I like because I'm on the internet looking at recipes, watching how they're made and deciding whether or not I want to make that. And this is an, a really easy recipe if you're not that confident in the kitchen. This is super easy. It doesn't require a lot of expertise, but we'll take this one out. And if you want to, you can kind of support it. Let it, let the extra, the excess drain off if you don't lose it like I just did. <laughs> oh, it's falling apart. Oh, that's fine. This one will be mine. It's no big deal. But you want to drain the excess and then put it onto a fresh, clean plate and then move on to the next one. So I will talk to you guys when I get this all done. All right. As you can see, we are all battered up and nice and ready to go. So we are going to move these over to the stove and I will be back in a minute. But you want to start your stove on, I'd say, a half tick. Well, like I said, like I say all the time, cooking isn't an exact science, but you want it to be warm, but not 
flaming hot. So mine, that means a half a tick past medium. So we're gonna preheat our pan and no butter is required, or at least I'm gonna try it with no butter. And then we are going to flip these every, let's say two minutes, cause I've, I've actually, I can't remember, Actually, I made it with my mother recently, but I can't remember the time that it took to make it. So we're just gonna say two minutes on each side. And if one of them gets burnt, that'll be mine too. So we'll see you over at the stove. Now, since this includes raw egg, I'm not gonna reuse this plate because I don't wanna get my neighbors or myself sick. So you always wanna read food precautions and figure everything out, figure out the pros and cons of the food you're making before you make it. This is one of the cons is you can't reuse the plate. So we're just waiting for this to heat up and then get that out of there. It, it's okay, it wasn't hot. But always be safe when you're cooking in the kitchen. I know I just demonstrated how not to be safe, but be safe in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys when this gets nice and hot. Oh, another thing. If you want to test to see how hot something is without reaching into the pan, because that can be dangerous, you, you take a little, um, like, eyedropper. Uh, I don't know what they're called, but you it looks like an eyedropper, and you just sprinkle some water in, and when the water gets to your your liking of evaporation, meaning how quickly it evaporates, then you put your food on. Because then you know you're cooking with gas. But anyways, I will see you guys when this gets nice and hot. All right, 10 minutes has gone by and I can feel, I can honestly say, I can feel the heat from right where I'm sitting without even doing any measuring or water test or anything like that. So, like I said, we're gonna put this on for two minutes and don't touch it during those two minutes. Like some people wanna lift it up, like they wanna lift up and look at it. Don't do that, don't do that. Cause then you're basically resetting the cooking process. So we're gonna throw the first one on. Ooh, and it's sticky, I like that. Cause it holds to better get, to get, it holds to better, or, cheese. Here I am, blooper of the month. It holds together, together better. <laughs> that's gonna, it's gonna be the whole video, <laughs> but that's okay. I'll, I don't mind. But I might actually boost this up to about one, one two, three o'clock. So the arrow for my thing is directly that way. But two minutes on each side. And then I'll talk to you guys in a minute. But anyways, oh, get you another plate. Right now, while this is cooking, get you another plate because we can't use this one. So I will see you guys in a minute. If I can push the button. <laughs> All right, it is time to flip. Man, two minutes goes by when you're having fun. But that is, that is perfect. Like, I don't mind the messiness that it looks, but that's okay. So, oh, shoot, 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 shoot. Okay, we're gonna get this back up, and we're gonna move it over here, because you wanna be able to cook more than one, because you'll be here all day if you don't. But we're gonna get the next one started while that one's cooking. The last bit is cooking. And you wanna make sure you have total coverage meaning every inch of the next piece is contacting the skillet, pan, I don't know what this is called. I'll know eventually, but that's okay. But anyways, I will see you guys when this is all done and we'll enjoy. When cooking, you always wanna move in sync sequences. Like whether it's, oh, that's gonna fall apart, but that's okay. But, oh, this is the destroyed one, okay but you always wanna be moving in sequences because that way, well, this one kinda of just turned into a butter ball. Okay, that'll be mine, that's fine. 
but you always want to move in sequences because that way you can make kind of make cooking an exact science but it'll never be an exact science because everybody's everybody's stove setup whatever is different so I've got the unprepared ones over here and then I'm cooking and then I move them over onto the final plate so you just want to always move in sequences and have everything prepared when you're cooking so that way you don't burn something trying to grace and grab something else so I will see you guys when this is all done that is my little rant on being prepared oh I remember what I was gonna tell you guys but at the beginning of the video I said to put these on for 30 seconds on each side that is for really thick bread like um, rye bread or the the bread that's like an inch inch and a half in um, depth but this is only like half an inch so I boosted it down to 20 per 20 seconds on each side and let's get that out of there I don't even know what that is. Oh, that's part of that's part of the egg. That's no big deal. But um I boosted it down and when I say that cooking is an isn't an exact science, I really mean it. It's all about experimenting, finding out what works, what doesn't work and we're going from there, working with that and kind of making it an exact science if you're do like let's say I cook this for 20 years. I know what works and what doesn't work for my kitchen. So it's it's an exact science if you stay in the exact same location for X amount of years and you become an expert on cooking this kind of thing. But if you're moving around constantly, it's not an exact science. But I still believe in that it's I still believe in the idea that it's not an exact science. So but anyways, we've got one more minute on this one, and this one's done, and then we gotta cook our final, our final piece of toast. But anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying the video, and if you want to, you can tell me what, what recipes you want me to do next, and I will research them and see if there's, there's something in there for me. And, and if I don't pick your recipe, don't take it to heart it's just that recipe didn't meld with my personality or the way that I like to cook so if I don't pick your recipe don't don't be offended or upset it's just it wasn't my style of cooking so here we go we're gonna take this one off and then we're gonna add the final one and I will see you guys at the tasting table alright here we are at the tasting table and since I didn't have any maple syrup, I'm going to put a little bit of this chocolate syrup on it. And we're going to just try and see what it's like. But anyways, if I can get the lid off, that is. But I usually do this with pancakes, but um, French toast, pancakes, eh, who knows the difference. I'm kind of loosey-goosey when it comes to condiments. But anyways, mix that in nice. Oh, this is not wanting to... This is just a difficult day for me. My favorite recipe in the whole world, and it's the most difficult one. Actually, my favorite recipe in the whole world is my specialty cookies, which I will be re-uploading, but I will do it properly so that the camera isn't upside down. But anyways, let's try this. It's very good, very light and fluffy, which is what you want in terms of French toast. And you want the eggs to really integrate into the, the bread. I think next time I should let them stale up a little bit more because they kind of, it kind of fell apart, especially this one right here. This one was a troublemaker. So I'm gonna see if he's as troublesome now as he was but 
This has been Cooking with the Cripple. I've been your host, the Cripple. And I hope you guys have a pleasant day. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. Bye-bye.